right now on No More Down Low. Where are we? On TV. A new report cites an increase in LGBT characters on scripted series this season, but where are the black LGBT characters? I'm Kendall Hogan. Is America ready for an African-American gay or lesbian character on primetime television? I think that they are eventually leading to that. Then, the world was intrigued with all things London during last summer's Olympic Games, but something was missing. And I'm Janora McDuffie. What's it like to be black and gay in the UK? It seems to be a struggle for so many people. Then, we'll introduce you to Charlotte, North Carolina's first openly lesbian city councilwoman, Luana Mayfield, and discover how she's shaking things up in the Queen City. And we'll go behind the scenes of a one-of-a-kind fitness model competition that celebrates the beauty of the gay male physique. It's all coming up next on No More Down Low. Hi, this is Daryl Stevens, and this is No More Down Low. Everybody, we are in West Hollywood, California with the start of season three of No More Download. I'm Janora McDuffie. I'm Kendall Hogan. I cannot believe it's already been two years and we're starting our third season <laughs> know, already. right? Wow, guys. Well, later on in the show, we're gonna give you some highlights of this past year. We're also gonna take you a tour around the area. But first up, we're gonna go to Hollywood where Mark Noble is standing by with his report on the state of black LGBT characters in primetime TV. And that should be pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. Mark Noble, take it away. Well, Kendall and Janora, we are across the street from Paramount Studios here in Hollywood. It is one of the few studios in town that are behind shows, be it on cable or on primetime, that feature LGBT characters. And as we look at the status of LGBT characters who happen to be black, I can tell you that the numbers are promising. Increasingly, LGBT characters are holding a presence in primetime. But within that number, where do people of color who happen to be same gender loving see themselves? I know that things certainly are spoken of and come up and I think that they are eventually leading to that and it will just take a matter of time. Powerhouse casting director Robbie Reed says the audience, believe it or not, has influence over what is seen over the airwaves and in many cases audiences have spoken. According to the most recent tracking of Where We Are on TV report by GLAAD, Gay Lesbian Alliance Against Defamation, African American representation in primetime series regular cast has jumped from 9 to 12 percent, totaling 84 out of the 701 series regular characters. ABC has the highest amount with over 5 percent of its regular characters identifying as LGBT, including Don't Trust the Bee in Apartment 23 actor Ray Ford, who portrays gay character Luther. Do something. Audiences were also given a large-scale glance on the now-canceled CW series, The Complex, which followed the same-sex relationship of principal characters Cal and Tariq. The network couldn't handle it. There is now a series on YouTube chronicling their relationship. I got stuff going on, so it's very exciting. Logo, the network designed to provide programming for the LGBT community, has undergone a complete revamping, managing to maintain some ties to its original audience with the newly created DTLA, which features the combination of the LGBT and heterosexual community. People have been asking me what's the difference between this show and, and Noah's Ark, and I would say Noah's Ark was almost like a romantic comedy about two men falling in love. And DTLA feels like a show about two men and their friends struggling to hold their relationship together, sort of the opposite end of that story. But on the larger cable front, where representation is considerably higher, the number of announced LGBT series regular characters also jumped to 35 and feature 26 reoccurring characters for a total of 61 LGBT characters, with HBO's True Blood as the most inclusive show on cable television with six gay, lesbian, or bisexual characters. The series scored a hit with same gender-loving characters Lafayette, Jesus, and even Tara Thornton, played by Rutina Wesley, who is straight. She recently opened up about playing a lesbian. That's what I love about True Blood, is that it kind of reminds me of theater, because it's so um, out there and bold. Ironically, BET stands as one of the five major African-American networks alongside Centric, TV One, Bounce, and Aspire, 
whose programming hasn't reflected those positive images of LGBT people without resorting to stereotypes. It's important to hear, you know, from the audience and, you know, if people that want to see those characters on TV write into the network, I know it sounds like a long lost cause, but it does make a difference. As we approved with the game and BET, you know, with it being so successful in its second reincarnation, whereas on the CW, you know, the, the support wasn't put behind it, but the audience, the fans wanted to see it, and they, you know, kept um, going for it and eventually got back on the air. And one way to continue to improve those statistics and those numbers is for those folks in the LGBT community and their allies and supporters is to stay on top of the networks to make sure that their voices are heard. We are in Hollywood. Mark Noble for No More Down Low. Janora, back to you. Thank you so much, Mark, for that excellent report. So we are in West Hollywood for the start of season three of our show. And here's a little bit of information about this creative city. Officially founded in 1984, West Hollywood is a young, vibrant community with a colorful and entertaining past. It began as the headquarters of the Los Angeles Pacific Railway Company. And as time moved on, motion picture studios emerged through decades, it became a major gathering place for the counterculture as hippies, musicians, and artists all flocked to West Hollywood's world famous Sunset Strip, the playground for rock and roll music. Today, the city has grown to some 39,000 residents and is one of the world's most LGBT inclusive cities. Each year, the city plays host to one of the nation's largest pride festivals and the LGBT nightlife retail district as well as cultural events rivals none other and there you have it west hollywood the creative city kendall thanks janora i'm here at the pacific design center home of the west coast top decorating showrooms and furniture markets if you're ever here in west hollywood you got to check this place out so we're going from the west coast to the queen city also known as charlotte north carolina now, Charlotte played host to this year's Democratic National Convention. And don't get it twisted, Charlotte is a very progressive city. It just recently elected its first openly lesbian city councilwoman. Louisa Bennett introduces us to Lawana Mayfield. This is the new Charlotte. For more than 15 years, Lawana Mayfield worked as a community organizer in the city of Charlotte. She had no ambition to seek public office, but as the expression goes, sometimes you find the cause and sometimes the cause finds you. So when a really good friend of mine, she brought up the idea of me running for office, at first I thought she was joking because I never really considered myself being a politician because I was always out protesting right. and marching up and down the street. <laughs> and I was the one on the other side telling council that we need you to step forward and be more vocal. Okay, you decide to run for city councilwoman. <laughs> Obviously, you were out amongst your yes. peers and friends. Was the that an In the community. <laughs> was that an issue? I went home, talked to my partner, of which we just celebrated six years oh, on the 20th of this month. Talked to her mother, made sure I had the family support, talked to my pastor, made sure that I had the support I needed in my immediate family because I knew it could get ugly. But I am not one to walk in a stance of less than. I am 100% authentic in who I am. So if I was going to do this, I knew I was going to be running exactly who I am as an out African-American woman and unapologetic about that. I'm Luana Mayfield, your Democratic candidate for City Council District 3. And so this first time candidate decided to make a run for council in Charlotte's District 3. And much to her surprise, she not only won the Democratic primary, but in the general election, she unseated an eight-year Republican incumbent in a landslide. The community was just so supportive and encouraging that in the general election, I ended up winning with more than 70% of the vote. But in a surprising twist, as Luana made history becoming Charlotte's first openly lesbian city councilwoman, Amendment 1, North Carolina's marriage equality bill, went down in defeat. One of the things that I'm proud of, because I have so many things I can be proud of with the city of Charlotte, is when you look at the numbers, the city of Charlotte, Mecklenburg County, clearly said that is not a stance that we want to take, a stance of discrimination. So we have work to do in the smaller communities 
and I tell my friends, because I have so many heterosexual friends that's been married and divorced, I was like, we just say we deserve the same right to go ahead and walk down the aisle, and if it work, it work, and if it don't, divorce and try it again. Councilwoman Luana Mayfield. <laughs> Today, Lawana Mayfield is heralded as a trailblazer, but she doesn't see it that way. She says what she did is something that anyone can do if you just go out and do it. They need to get up out their houses and honestly get up off their butts and instead of complaining about it, be a part of the solution. It's easy to complain from the cheap seats. If you don't like it, join a committee. Join a commission, join a board with your local legislation. That's how you get involved, because when you're sitting at that table, then your voice is heard. Everybody doesn't have to run for office, but you have something that you can contribute so that young people and older people coming behind you can see you walking in your authentic self, see you doing positive work. That's what we need to do. Isn't she amazing? Right now, Lawanda's future looks so bright and everyone in the Democratic Party is really eyeing big things for her. But she says right now, I just want to focus on my community and doing things like bringing healthy food choices to her district. And as a native North Carolinian, I just want to wish Lawanda the best of luck in making a difference in Charlotte and the entire state. Go girl. Still ahead, what's it like to be black and gay in the UK? We'll introduce you to a man who's telling black LGBT stories in film. Then. We'll go behind the scenes of a one-of-a-kind fitness model competition that focuses on the gay male physique. Stay with us. More from West Hollywood when we return. Welcome back to No More Down Low. We're on location in West Hollywood with the start of season three of our show. I'm standing in Library Park, and home of the state-of-the-art beautiful library complex. The facility features an extensive historical LGBT archive, high-tech computer labs, children's storytelling and community theaters, a career development center, a coffee bar, and expanded parking structure. And yes, it even has a rooftop tennis court. And as you can see, it's an architectural jewel. Janora? You're right, Kendall, that is a beautiful facility. Well, switching gears up just a little bit, if you are anything like me, this summer you were glued to the Olympics in London. So the thought occurred to me, what would it be like to be black and gay in the UK? Well, up next you'll meet a man who is on a mission to answer that question by telling London's LGBT stories through his award-winning works in film. Take a look. Around 11 is when I really started um, becoming a filmmaker. If you're out, you're in. If you're in, you're out. And if you're straight, you're too damn late. Meet Ricky Beetle Blair, the UK's gay answer to Spike Lee and then some. He's a writer, actor, dancer, singer, songwriter, and award-winning filmmaker who's dedicated his life to telling British LGBT stories through his lens. I'm not grand. I don't need lots of studio money and all of those things, or more money. And I can always make it out of what's there. Do you know any other dance skills? Absolute homosexual. You what? Jordan, you what? What'd you say? What did you say? You've got something to say, then speak okay. up. Okay. What? Ricky has racked up a number of awards for storytelling brilliance. We were with him back in 2011 when he received the Outfest Fusion Achievement Award in Los Angeles. Because this, I understand now, isn't for me. This is for little colored boys in South London, and South Central, and South America. This is for everyone. But getting the award is nothing. I am supposed to be the award. My job is to earn that. When someone gives that to me, my job is to, is to give that back to the people who are watching and be an award to little black boys, little white boys, little gay boys, little straight boys who are a little bit different. Ricky is quite unique, really. Jennifer Daly is a single bisexual actress who has starred in several Ricky Beetle Blair films. She says though his work is largely inclusive of all races, gender and sexual orientation, no one else puts the spotlight on London's same gender loving people of color like Ricky. We caught up with her via Skype at her home in London. As far as I'm aware, um, he's the only person, the only kind of writer, director, artist doing the kind of work that he does. Um, it's very um, 
It is very inclusive. Black people! Brown, yellow, red and white people! It's time for the highlights of UK Black Pride! Miss Dynamite inside the place! So what's it like for same gender loving people of colour in London? Well I've been around the world and being gay of African descent seems to be a struggle for so many people. I've heard it in Hong Kong, I've heard it in uh, all across America, I've heard it all over the world I've been to, the same issues, and I've heard it in Britain. British people are fun and liberated. You know, I find quite a lot of black gay people out in the centre of London. Um, at the, you know, the Pride Festival. The highlight for me today is to see all these beautiful people of every single shade and colour dancing together, having a good time. No riots, no stress, no fear of, um, of oppression, just having a good time and letting their hair down. I want to tell the stories I want to tell, and a lot of them are gay stories, and, and I don't want to pander to gay people and go, well, I'm only going to tell those stories either. I, I'm just limitless. <laughs> Ricky's works extend beyond the shores of Great Britain. He's also credited as a writer and creative consultant on one of America's most successful gay television series called Noah's Ark. Kendall? Noah's Ark, I love that show. But now let's take you to a fitness competition that celebrates the beauty of the gay male physique and also helps promote a healthy lifestyle for both gay and gay-friendly men. Lorenzo Dandridge takes us behind the scenes of the 2012 Body Boys United Fitness Competition. It's time for the masculine guys to step up and do and come out of the closet and say, hey, it's okay to be masculine and, and still be gay. From Miami Beach to Palm Springs to Malibu, California, all across America, same gender loving men of color are coming together to celebrate a healthier lifestyle in the wake of the HIV virus and AIDS. <laughs> Now in Hollywood comes a male beauty pageant that takes healthy living one step further. It's called the Body Boys United Fitness Model Competition, and Sydney Flex Porter is the CEO. So we started uh, basically for the for gay and gay-friendly um, uh, men of color as a way to bring like-minded brothers together to celebrate fitness and have a good time. And it's time to really get educated for a healthier, to live longer, um, to be a lot happier. But winning here isn't easy. It takes hard work and a lot of sacrifice. I work out six days a week. I try to isolate different body parts. When it comes to abs, I go hard. You know, if I'm not cramping up when I'm done, then I didn't work out hard enough. I'm not leaving the gym until I feel the cramp coming on. And I work out Monday through Saturday. Um, if it's nine in the morning, it's at night. Welcome to Body Boys United. And though the number of contestants was small this year, the competition includes all the standard elements of traditional beauty pageants, including sportswear, swimwear, and yes, even the dreaded question and answer. So you tell us why you should be the model for 2013. I should be the model because I am sexy. <laughs> and after the judges tabulate the scores comes the big announcement. Your yeah, Body Boys United 2013 model Stephen Platter. For the next year, Stephen Platter will be the official spokesmodel for Body Boys United as their ambassador for healthy living. I just want, you know, the gay community to know that we are strong individuals in all aspects of life, even when it comes to physical fitness. And, you know, they might not think we're as masculine, but this shows you that we are. Steven says his goal this year is to encourage African-American LGBT people that it's never too late to get fit and stay healthy. That's great advice. Absolutely. Congratulations on your achievement, Steven. And that is it for our show today. Here's a look at what's coming up on our next show. On the next, no more downloads. Becoming Kai. It's not something that I thought about consciously growing up. I wanted to have top surgery because I felt like that would make me feel more comfortable. When people can't figure out if you are male or female, then they have a tendency to not see you as human at all. Hear the incredible story of how one person transitioned to become who he is today. Don't miss Kai's story on our next show.
All of that and more on our next show. We also invite you to join in on our daily discussions on Facebook at nomoredownlow.tv. And as we go into season three with more informative and entertaining stories, we first want to thank you guys, our loyal fans, for your continued support and your words of encouragement. So, from West Hollywood, California, reminding you to spread love and not hate, I'm Janora McDuffie. I'm Kendall Hogan. And as we close the show, guys, we want to show you some highlights of stories from this past year. Enjoy them. Good night. This film is about identity, and anybody can relate to that. Ladies and gentlemen, come on, Patrick Paul. Uh, black gay culture to the mainstream in a way that makes it um, more normal for people who find it abnormal. For me, I've learned all about the gay white male. I've learned about the, well, the gay white male. The gay white male. So pretty much just learning about a different identity within that, especially of color, is something that definitely everyone should know a part of because we are definitely a part of building America today. North Beach Gay Club Festival 2012. The queen is hyped up. This was Hollywood's kissing at Chick-fil-A. It's not about getting in people's faces necessarily yelling. We are going to have equal rights. We are going to have gay marriage. And so now's the time to decide which side of history you're going to be on. I've always been adamant that uh, gay and lesbian uh, Americans should be treated fairly. I was the only openly gay African American member of the DNC. And so to see President Obama support, come out and support marriage equality, announce marriage equality being moved forward in the platform, just, just it, it signifies that there's support for our community.